Hey guys, inside the small greenhouse here, you can see things look a lot different now. All those tomatoes I had hanging from the top, they're gone, cleaned out, and all the green stuff is just taken over. But I have some empty space over here on the left-hand side, and what I want to do is build some more of those floating raft beds and try to finish filling this greenhouse up. As you can see, this is the same 4x8 box that I had in the, uh, the bigger greenhouse. I emptied it out, cleaned everything up, brought it over here, set it up on some cinder blocks, got it leveled up, filled everything up and started a new batch of uh, lettuce, pak choy and uh, whatever else I got in here. I even transferred the one cabbage plant that I had growing in it, still doing just fine. But what I found out in the process of moving this box, it was pretty darn heavy, not too easy to move by myself. Plus I've only got two compartments in here. What I would like to do is come up with something where I actually have three boxes instead of like uh, two compartments here three individual boxes that I can kind of manipulate a little bit in the process of just picking them up and moving them around. Plus, I would be able to do some side-by-side -side experimenting and with various nutrient combinations and different solutions and things like that just to see how things work. So what I'm gonna do, instead of having a four by eight, one big box, I'm gonna take the same material plus a few more two by fours or two by sixes and make three boxes 32 inches wide by 48 inches long. So to be almost three by four. What I have here is two 7 16 sheets of OSB. I'm gonna just take the skill saw real quick and rip these things up and uh, make two cuts to get me three identical pieces. And most of the time when you forget your OSB, it's gonna have the markings already on here for your rafter spacing, uh, 16 inch. Then you got a 24 and a 32 inch line right here. Use the 16 and the 32 for your 16 inch rafter spacing. What I'm gonna do is use the 32 line from each end and that'll give me three pieces 32 inches wide for the bottom of my boxes. After I finish all my cutting this is what I've got six pieces 32 inches by 48 inches and this will be a box that I can actually handle without too much trouble. Also if you're in a situation where you don't have a skill saw or you don't have a truck or something to haul this uh, plywood and the lumber back home you can get this stuff cut at Home Depot or Lowe's. They got a rack set up in the back and you just tell them what size you want it cut. They can set it up on there real quick and make these cuts for you and they'll do your lumber the same way. To make the box frame itself, what I'm gonna use is a two by six by eights. And to secure the plastic along the outside edge, I'm gonna use these uh, one by twos here. And as you'll notice, I got a little bit of stain on these things. I wanna make these boxes look pretty. They're gonna be in here for uh, quite a while, I hope. The boxes are 32 inches by 48 inches. So we're gonna cut the first two by sixes 48 inches long. They're gonna go the long ways. And for the ends, you're not gonna have 32 inches. You're gonna to have to subtract the inch and a half for each of the sideboards. So subtract three inches from the 32 and you'll cut your end pieces 29 inches. So for each box, you got two 48s and two 29 inch pieces. Once you get all your boards cut, then it's time to screw the frame together and I'm using three inch deck screws. And remember the 48 inch piece goes on the outside. This is the long piece and the 29 is gonna go on the inside. Once you have the frame built, it's time to put the bottom in it. And what I do is I'll put the side that has the, the markings on it, put that down. That's a lot smoother, less likely to have splinters and rip your plastic. So put that toward the inside. Make sure it's uh, squared up. If you got any uh, differences from one end to the other, split the difference. And to attach it, what I'm gonna use is an inch and five eight screws. Do this all the way around, about every eight, 10 inches, something like that, and that'll hold it pretty good. Once you get it all screwed together, this is what you end up with a nice box, 32 inches by 48 inches, something much easier to handle than a full size box that was a four foot by eight foot. I can work with this. We also need to cut the strips that are gonna hold the plastic on the sides of the box. And what I've got right here, I got it marked at 48 inches. This is gonna go on the outside and the ends are actually gonna be the 32 inch length as opposed to the 29. It's not exactly going to overlap on the ends, but it'll be close. I've got one marked, evened up the ends to the left, and I'm going to cut three at one time. For my plastic, I'm going to use the regular six mil that you can get from places like Lowe's, Home Depot. 
I'm working off of a 20 by 100 foot roll, so I know I've got a width of 20 foot that I can uh, compute into my box. For the box itself, it's four foot long, so I'm gonna add a foot for each end. That'll give me six foot. The other direction is 32, round it up to 36 and just say three foot, add another foot for each side. So we basically got a, I need a six by five foot piece of plastic. Taking into consideration that my plastic on the roll is 20 foot wide, I can use the five foot dimension of the uh, boxes. And what I need to do then is cut the plastic itself off the roll six foot. So what I have here is a piece of plastic that is 20 foot long, six foot wide. Out of that, I'll be able to get four pieces, dividing it by five, I'll be able to get four pieces to do four boxes with. That's how you always try to figure things when you're working with materials. Do it in a way that you don't have any waste. There was no waste to the lumber and cutting the plastic in this manner, I won't have any waste to it either. And when you're cutting this stuff, make sure you got your sharp blade in here so you don't end up with a whole bunch of jagged, uneven stuff on the side. And if you have the option, slide your razor blade out far enough where you can cut all the way through it to slice that foil back in on the back side of it. Give you a nice clean cut. What I've done here is flip the styrofoam over so I can make my markings on the back and the front side will be nice and clean. What I did is take a measurement and make a mark right down the very center of this piece, 16 inches. Either side of that is another mark 12 inches away from the center or four inches in from the uh, outside edge. That'll give me three rows of lettuce in this one particular box. For the spacing of the holes, what I did was come in six inches from the end and then go every 12 inches. So I got six, 18, 30, and 42. That'll give me 12 evenly spaced holes and should do great for this kind of lettuce. To drill my holes, what I'm gonna use is a two inch hole saw. Go ahead and stick the bit right on your little mark, press it down, and you're going to do this in reverse, very slowly. Just ease it on down through, and when you feel it just about through the back side, flip it over, and you're going to do it again, right in that same spot. That way you drill out that hole nice and smooth. You end up with a very nice clean finish on top. The back side has all your markings and it looks like professional work. What I've done right here is just taken some blocks, level them up to create a little platform for me to put this box on. This box right here is a whole lot easier for me to handle than that four by eight one was. Now we'll put some plastic on there. Since I'm not going to be able to get to the back side, once I push this box in place, I chose to make this my starting point. Went ahead and put the strip on the back side here, and I'll work with it from that point forward. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and start filling it up with water to try to work the plastic into place. Once you get the plastic all smoothed out, get it eased down into the crack so the water can fill in and not have any pressure on it. Just pull it nice and snug on the corners. A little bit tricky right here where you gotta fold it over. You try to get that as flat as you possibly can, even if you have to go up under and cut some of the plastic out so it'll lay down nice and smooth. Because if you end up with a lump right here, what it's gonna do is raise this corner up a little bit and make this one plant sitting on this corner be a little bit higher than everything else. And then it's just a matter of come back and putting your trim strip on, and then we'll take the knife and cut the excess off. I don't know what y'all think, but I think that's pretty. I'm not gonna finish filling it up with water right now because I need to do some calculations and determine exactly how much fertilizer I need to put in there. But once I put the styrofoam on it, get that in place, drop the neck cups down in it with the plants, we'll be good to go. We'll get this thing filled up and get it planted next time. And just set it and forget it. Well guys, that's how simple it is to build these boxes. Just some plywood, two by six frame, and a little fur and strip or one by two on the outside to just to secure the plastic in place. Cut you some styrofoam to go on top. What I gotta do now is finish going down this side, getting the rest of the boxes and everything set up. Order some neck cups. Didn't realize I didn't have enough neck cups to do this. 
and what I want to do is try some different fertilizer combinations to see you know exactly how they perform some of the stuff that's in the store that you can get off the shelf and some online stuff too. just do them side by side and find out what does what also you may not necessarily have to use two by sixes I saw a guy recently garden soil DIY he made his boxes out of two by fours and he, I saw the video and his lettuce was doing great I think he was growing in his house and if you're in a controlled environment like that where your temperature stays steady and you don't have to worry about fluctuations like I do in the greenhouse where it gets up in the 80s in the daytime uh, I think a 2x4 will be fine for lettuce. Out here where I'm at, I'm better off with a deeper reservoir because my water temperatures will stay a lot more consistent. They won't uh, tend to go up and down as much because I have a bigger volume of water. Plus, I'll be able to grow those more aggressive type vegetables that actually need more water. So again, that's how simple this is to make these boxes, get them going, piece of cake. Y'all take care, and Lord willing, I'll see you next time.